Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of the From Busy to Rich podcast. Our podcast exists to inspire advisors like you to increase your profitability and your quality of life, but not just for you, for those that you serve. Uh, so in today's episode, it's a uh, closing section of um, our first part, which was where Wes was sharing about an event he recently attended, and it reminded him of how important it is to remind ourselves of our vision uh, versus learning what is new, new, new all the time. So Wes, thanks for being here today, and thanks for uh, continuing to take us on this path towards understanding understanding why we don't do what we know we should do. You bet, Andy. I, I love this topic. Um, this this Samuel Johnson quote it just really strikes me and uh, lives in my in my head uh, around so many different aspects of life that that people need to be reminded more often than they need to be instructed. Mm-hmm. So, it's, so what it's not saying is you don't need to be instructed. We're not saying that you need to put yourself in environments where new information is coming in, new epiphanies could happen. But honestly, some of the greatest moves forward in your life would happen if you just reminded yourself of the thing you already know to do. Mm-hmm. And and if you reminded yourself of some disciplines that allow you to move and navigate this gap between where we are and where we want to be in an impactful way. Um, last week, we talked a lot about one of them is, is that you've got to have an exciting vision because an exciting vision gives you the fuel necessary to do the hard things today because you know what's over the corner tomorrow, if you keep pushing forward, it serves as a filter uh, for for the things that are good ideas, but they are not the best ideas that need to go into your day right now that are going to help get you where you want to go. Um, those are things, the fuel and the filter are such an, if you renew your mind every day to this exciting vision of what life could be like, that that is such a critical component that frankly is missing from most people's lives or they just forgot about it. They just forgot. But, hey, what? What? Why am I trying to do all the things I'm doing? And and then so if I don't I'm not clear about that, anything looks good. Um, today, there's another component to that, and 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 I believe as important as as having the exciting vision, and that's you need to regularly renew your mind to your grateful condition. And and here's where it gets tricky. Okay, is that. I believe all of us, I believe by the hand of God, are, are created to want to make today better than yesterday, tomorrow better than it is today. And mm-hmm. I think there's nobody out there, regardless of what your belief system is, I mean, you would like things to be better. Um, and and I think it's where faith lives. Faith is the substance of things we hope for, evidence of things not yet seen. Um, it's where energy to do the hard thing comes from, as we said. It's also, like we said, where the filter comes from when we got this bigger vision of tomorrow than today. But if we're not careful... We can be so focused on the future uh, that we want to create and all the things necessary to do to get there that we really come to a place where we might not be very happy with where we are on our way to where we're going. And, and Andy, oftentimes, if I'm not careful, I find the fuel I'm running off of that's fueling me to, to, to get to this next thing, um, it becomes one that is is what I would have you know great great book on this was John Gordon's book uh, the one truth but it, it it becomes I'm leading myself out of my out of my wound rather mm-hmm. than out of my healing I'm leading myself out of my wounding than my healing because here's the thing if I'm so focused on the future and I'm not taking time to actually be grateful for where I am on my way to where I'm going then I can create all the success in the world from a from a goal check the box standpoint, but I don't have fulfillment. And fulfillment only exists when you can have both a grateful condition and an exciting vision. It won't mean you won't do a lot of things. It won't mean you won't have a lot of success. It just means your journey is going to be a whole lot less fulfilling. So so what I'd like to talk about with you guys and just kind of beat up a little bit here, um, that has been a practice that I've seen be one of the best things in the world to renew my mind to, and I've seen this exist in lives of hundreds and hundreds of advisors, is not just regularly daily renewing yourself to that uh, exciting vision, which is important, but also daily, regularly renewing your mind to your grateful condition mm-hmm. by just taking a little bit of time to yeah. say, here's my gratitude list. Uh, John yeah. Gordon calls it, he goes on a gratitude walk every day. But, yeah. but I, I read my gratitude list of all the things I'm excited about that's happened, 
the people in my life, the things that were big ideas that came to pass. We like to say many of us have in our lives what we what we once prayed for, or or you have in your life what you once hoped for. And so writing those things down and regularly just giving yourself 10 minutes in a day, because it changes me. It changes my how I go about navigating the gap. I'm lighter. It's more fun. I'm enjoying the moment. I'm present in the moment, even though I'm Andy, this isn't about the absence of ambition. It's not singing Kumbaya and being super sure. excited about what, sure. well, look at what it was. So that's, that's what I want to talk about. I think it, another way of saying this is how do you show up to your day? You know, I, I think about when I'm stuck in traffic and it's 90 degrees outside. The reason I stay calm is I probably have air conditioning. So I can be grateful for that. And I, I call, so I'm not walking, right? And I'm probably driving somewhere I want to go. So I'm like to work, which means I have a job, right? And my car is still running, which means I have gas in the tank. Like there's all these things. And I think the challenging part, if I can go here for a second, um, the challenging part of, of not having a grateful condition is sometimes it takes you losing something for you to be grateful for it. And thankfully, you can often learn from other people's loss. It was a young man that I got to meet about two years ago, maybe three years ago now. He was 16 years old. And I met him. I had one interaction with him. It was for about an hour and a half uh, on a baseball field. Um, and uh, within a few months, that young man passed away uh, at the age of 16. And uh, just a really freak uh, accident. And he was an amazing athlete. And I guarantee you, I can guarantee you that the last time his parents saw him take the baseball field, they did not think this is the last time we're going to see our son play baseball. Mm -hmm. We should probably really enjoy this game. And where it's changed my condition is now when I show up at a game, whether I'm an umpire or I'm a coach or whatever the situation is, I show up and I am just grateful. Like, oh, we're going to lose by 20 runs. I don't care. I show up grateful. And it's amazing how it changes everything after that. Doesn't mean I don't want to win. Doesn't mean I, it's not, you know, they're going to take some work. Doesn't mean that, um, you know, I might go up and down during the day or the experience, but what a difference it is when you show up with a grateful condition versus sort of empty or an ungrateful condition. And it's a starting point. Where do you want to start your day? Where do you want to start your thinking? Uh, and I think. I know from my own experience how fundamentally different your behavior is because I see parents show up and I'm like, you are not grateful for today because you yeah. are freaking out, yelling at your 10 year old child because they're not doing something you probably couldn't even do. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Well, they're, they're leading the from their wound, right? They're leading from their wound because they, they listen, no parent wants to mess up their kid. No, no, most parents don't. Right. Yeah. But, but we do. And, and we do because we want something for them. We we have this like future that, that they want them to be a professional baseball player, maybe right. As unrealistic as that may be, they they really want that, and so they're they're just they're because they're not operating from the they're, they're not fueled by their grateful condition. They're fueled by lack of accomplishment, maybe in their own life or the way they were raised. They leave from the why aren't you doing that? There's there's no good long term that comes from that. Is you know what it reminds me? You you mentioned air conditioning, right? If if you're in the middle, if you're in Austin in the middle of the summer, mm -hmm. it's hot. It's probably going to be 101 degrees at the, at the worst possible times, right? And if I want to go to downtown Austin and, I, and I've got a, a truck and I was going to, and, and let's say my vision was I want to make it to my condo downtown. Mm -hmm. I know it's going to be fun. We're going to have a great time. And then Jamie and I get in my truck in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the day in Austin, and I choose not to turn on the air conditioning. Right. I'm still going to travel the same road. To get down there, I'm going to sweat and be hot and it's going to be, you know, just a, a very terrible rough journey, even though I still get there. So I still achieved the same thing or I can choose to turn the air conditioning on. And, and I'm going to tell you the gratitude that, that remind you, renewing your mind to the grateful condition is like turning air conditioning on your journey. It's not a lack of accomplishment. It's a lot of lack of ability, it, but you are going to, you're going to get there. And you're going to love the journey a lot more. You're going to be mm -hmm. better off and have more energy when you get there. It is a fundamental, unchangeable, like imperative of, of, of life when navigating this stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm going to carry the analogy a little further, which is 
and I'm, and I'm guessing you, you don't have to do this, but uh, regularly because you probably park in the garage. But you ever have that thing where you park outside and you're like, my car is 198 degrees right now inside. So you have to go. And the first thing you do is you open up all the windows to let the inferno out. Then you turn on the air and your wife gets in the car and she's like, honey, you know, you hit the remote start because, you know, you know, Tesla's got that thing, you know, that's right. And it's a 68. You know what I mean? And it's like, hey, how do you want to start your journey? Right. Do you want to start it in an optimal, optimistic, healthy way? Or do you yeah. want to just jump into the inferno that is the interior of your car in Austin? Right. And, and again, I know we're carrying this analogy forward, but when you wake up and I find it helpful, but like when my eyes open, right. And they don't have any focus yet because I still got the, the, the eye stuff for my sleep. You know, I'm like, can't, that's kind of, you know, I can't see real quick that what is my first thought. Right. And it's all the way to that. And, and our goal is to help you um, figure out why you don't do the things that you know you should be doing. And so I want to encourage all of you that it, it's likely because, number one, you're lacking a vision. We talked about that before. You're not exactly sure where you do want to go. But your starting point needs to be, I'm grateful for right now, and I will carry that towards my vision. Yeah. Versus what I do not have, what I do not have, what they have, what I wish I had. That is a very different starting point. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it is fuel. It is, and and you can be you know you can be fueled for your for your run, your one mile run with candy, or you can be fueled for your one mile run with things that are actually going to have sustainable energy. And your experience is different, even if you finish the same, even if you get to the same place. We were in this in this in the room and some very vulnerable conversations with some great leaders that have accomplished a lot, and it was so funny the things that we had in common um, around people that have achieved amazing things and how quickly, how quickly you know it's like the vision for some people is very clear and they know and they are reminding themselves of it, but how quickly what's driving us is not. A grateful condition. It is not enjoyable. It is, mm. it is a, I got to, it's, a, it's our wounding. It's, I've got to achieve. I've got to do this. I've got, and there's nothing, again, this is not about absence of ambition. I'm not saying that at all. It is about enjoying where you are and your way to where you're going. And there is a, a things you can do. And I just don't know a better way than to, 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 to start at least. I mean, I think there's deep work you can do here because you, know, you start getting into wounds and lies we believe yeah. and, Guys, we tell ourselves, and and then there's a lot of work there to be done, um, which is why I go read John Gordon's the the one truth because it does a lot with that. But but one easy thing you can do tomorrow, you don't even have to read anything. Is just do have a grateful condition. Start out and yes, where are you going? What do you care about? What's the vision you have out there? But then thank God or thank you know, whatever your system is, right? But I thank God for. I mean, look at all the great things that have occurred. And Andy, what it doesn't mean is you don't have stuff you don't like and you don't want to change. This is not about like optimism. This is grounded optimism. It is, I recognize there is stuff that in my life, I wouldn't write into the story of my life, but there's also some stuff that is good, no matter what the condition is. And right. renew your mind to that because you'll do life a whole lot better. I want to throw it to you, Justin. But before I do, I want to mention the the, the literal reality that you have another day to work on the thing that you don't have yet is a gift. Right? The fact, the fact that you have time, right? If you're feeling I'm at the very end, well, but you're not at the end because you still have time, right? That, that if you can consider these things and renew your mind, then there's still time left to reach whatever that vision is. Justin, what was your thought on this? I think you had had um, something to add. Yeah, I think it just builds on what you guys are talking about. I don't want to belabor it, but the, being grateful requires you to step back and, you know, take into account all the things that have gone well and are going well. And then I think you can be intentional about moving forward of finding small, like building in small, like wins, like find a way to like set shorter term goals because visions are big typically. Yeah. And they great point. Like, I want to lose 30 pounds. Well, how about celebrate when you lose the first one? Yeah. Right. Like build that in. Like you make profit. without, without celebrating with ice cream, you know, I don't get that. Yeah. Yeah. Not, not <laughs> that's that. But the point is like building small accomplishment. Like I was even looking at this, this study that's done by the Harvard Business School that people who tracked their small achievements every day enhanced their motivation. Like it's, yeah. it's a proven tactic. So find a way to build in like 
small accomplishments that you know are going to keep you in line with where you're going long term. But that way you've got something to celebrate now. You're not waiting until you've arrived at the final, quote unquote, final destination. Because the reality is once you get there, you're going to have new vision and new things that you're working towards. Um, Organizationally, Justin, you you bring up a great point because every week, just here's a small takeaway for you and your organization that you can build this in. Every week in our Thursday team meeting, what do we go around the room doing? Tell us your win, one of your wins for the week. What what was it that aligned with helping people increase the profitability and quality of life? How did that manifest in your world this week? And because it's just easy to do the work and then be on to the next week of work instead of going, let's celebrate the win. So Wes, as we wrap up for today, and again, this, you know, if there's a title for the series, it's why don't you do it? Why don't we do it when we know it to be true, when we know it to be helpful? Uh, a lack of vision for sure. Um, and, and also just not starting from a really healthy place, not a good foundation of an ungrateful, un- ungrateful condition. So, um, Wes, I'm just going to give you the last word and then we'll wrap up. We to, I'll use the Samuel Johnson quote is that we need to be reminded more than we need to be instructed. So re-listen to this and then just go put it on your calendar to do these things in the morning, tomorrow. I love that advice. Um, you know, we don't make an, an extra dollar if you listen to it again. So for free, stop, go back, listen to it again. You can listen to it faster. Your app probably has 1.5 speed or whatever. So listen to us, maybe a little faster next time. But listen again, don't go get something new. Don't go to the next episode of whatever our show is. Don't stop. Renew your mind. Re-listen to this. And we open the blessing to you. As always, thanks, Justin. Thank you, Wes, for your time. And thanks, folks, for listening. We appreciate you. 